Number 8. Seattle Police vs. School Officials the day was almost over for students at a Seattle school in June of 2022 when an intruder hopped a fence onto the campus and entered the building. Terrified kids ran for safety as the man walked through the school, entering at least one classroom and stealing a child's backpack. An adult reportedly had to intervene to keep him away from two students. According to a police report, school officials never dialed 911 during the lockdown. Someone else did and when officers responded to the scene, staff members were allegedly uncooperative. Officer Nicholas Gasly Jr. told local station KIRO7 that the principal and two teachers refused to talk to the police, so he treated the call as a welfare check. He said that the suspect, later identified as 20-year-old Libin Hassam, appeared to be under the influence of narcotics or having a mental episode. In the report, Gasly wrote that the principal refused to identify the student whose backpack was stolen, which meant that there was technically no victim in the case and therefore no probable cause to search the suspect. King County spokesperson Casey McNathney said that there would be no felony charges against Gasly due to the investigator's inability to gather enough evidence to justify a case. Hazem was initially charged with criminal trespass, vehicle prowling, two counts of assault, and resisting arrest, which are all minor violations level charges. Prior to the incident, he'd been charged at least nine times in other cases that year alone. A few days after the school intrusion, authorities announced that additional investigative work had turned up enough evidence to slap some felonies onto the list of charges Hassam faces. He's also now being accused of assaulting a delivery person and a police officer after he left the school. District officials remain tight-lipped about why they didn't cooperate with the police, but their refusal to do so hasn't made them look good, especially as the case continues to make headlines. Number 7. Slobodan Praljevic Numerous wars broke out during the breakup of Yugoslavia in the early 1990s as four of its former republics declared their independence. At the same time, various ethnic groups, namely Serbs living outside Serbia and Croats living outside Croatia, fought for their place within newly defined borders. Horrifying atrocities were committed during these conflicts, and when the fighting was finally over, a United Nations war tribunal sought to bring war criminals to justice. In 2004, former Bosnian Croat General Slobodan Praljak and five other ex-military members were indicted for alleged crimes against humanity during a conflict called the Croat-Bosniak War. Praljak was accused of ordering the destruction of a 16th century bridge in the city of Mostar, where some of the war's worst fighting occurred. By destroying the bridge, he allegedly caused disproportionate damage to the Muslim civilian population. The former military leader maintained his innocence throughout the trial, claiming that the bridge was a legitimate military target, but in the end, he was convicted of a laundry list of crimes, including willful killing, unlawful deportation, cruel treatment, unlawful labor, plundering, unlawfully attacking civilians, persecution on political, racial, and religious grounds, and more. Praljak received a 20-year prison sentence but successfully appealed his case. He'd already served 13 years when he was granted a new trial in 2017. And while some of his convictions were overturned, his original sentence was upheld. This outcome was unacceptable to the senile defendant, who said, Judges, Slobodan Praljak is not a war criminal. With disdain, I reject your verdict. Then he pulled out a bottle of cyanide and drank it, and you can likely guess what happened next. It's unclear whether Praljak knew that he would have been eligible for release from prison soon, having served more than two-thirds of his sentence. Sadly, the act was more likely done in defiance of the ruling against him than out of any mental anguish he may have felt about the thought of remaining in prison. Journalist Harry de Ketville famously pointed toward the act as the most dramatic proof possible of the denial that many people remain in over the ethnic cleansing that went on during the 90s. Number 6. H. B. T. Chadwick in 1995, Philadelphia lawyer H. B. T. Chadwick was entangled in bitter divorce proceedings with his soon-to-be ex-wife, Bobby, when the judge overseeing the case suspected him of lying about losing his nearly $3 million fortune to avoid hefty alimony payments. Chadwick insisted he spent the money on bad investments, but the court ultimately ordered him to produce it. When he refused, he was sent to jail for contempt of court. 
He remained behind bars for 14 years. In 2009, Delaware County Judge Joseph Cronin finally freed Chadwick, concluding that his incarceration had failed to have a coercive effect and that he was unlikely to turn over any money he might be hiding. It was the longest imprisonment on a contempt charge in United States history. Despite granting the stubborn attorney his freedom, Judge Cronin agreed with previous rulings that Chadwick was capable of complying with the court order to produce his money, and that he simply chose not to. Bobby described her ex-husband as extremely controlling. She told ABC News shortly after his release that she received a meager $600 monthly allowance and was stretched so thin financially that she sewed her own clothing despite being married to a millionaire. When Chadwick imposed a toilet paper limit of six sheets per bathroom visit, Bobby reached her breaking point with his rationally frugal ways. So she packed her belongings into garbage bags and left after 15 years of marriage. Bobby's lawyers allegedly tracked a lot of the missing money to a bank in Gibraltar. Its path back to the US was also traceable, but Chadwick continued to deny that it existed. By the time he was released, Bobby had given up on ever receiving a divorce settlement and was making a modest but comfortable living as an artist. Number 5. Tuberculosis Patient Refuses to Isolate In early 2023, the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department in Washington State revealed that it was monitoring an active case of tuberculosis, but that the woman suffering from the illness was refusing treatment. At the time, the department said it was isolating the patient in order to prevent the disease from spreading and that they were trying to persuade them to cooperate with taking medication. In a statement, spokesperson Nigel Turner said that most people are happy to get the treatment they need, but that there are legal measures the department can take in rare cases where patients refuse help. And that's exactly what happened in this case. It was the fourth time in 20 years that the agency sought court intervention. In 2015, a tuberculosis patient was put on an electronic monitoring device to ensure they stayed home throughout a nine-month course of treatment. The first request for a court order in the current case was made in early 2022, after the patient persistently refused treatment and allegedly kept leaving her house despite orders to isolate. More than a year and several court orders later, officials are still trying to get her to cooperate. Most recently, a judge gave the health department the green light to have the woman arrested and taken to jail for up to 45 days for isolation. According to the last update, the agency was still hoping to obtain compliance. However, it's unclear whether the patient was taken to jail or not. Number 4. Eleanor Stern most Americans despise going to the notoriously slow and unfriendly Department of Vehicles, but most of us understand that we have to be patient and follow their rules if we want service. It's unclear what set off an argument between DMV employees in Deerfield Beach, Florida and a 31-year-old woman named Eleanor Stern in 2015, but it didn't end well. Staff members called the police and asked them to remove Stern from the building after the disagreement reportedly got out of hand. A Florida state trooper responded to the scene and initially tried to take a peaceful approach with the disgruntled woman, but she was clearly in no mood for civilized conversation. In footage of the attack, the suspect can be heard berating the cop for not being able to fight. The trooper remained calm but ended up throwing Stern onto the floor to get her under control. Even after he covered the suspect with his body in an attempt to subdue her, she remained combative. Stern managed to wiggle out from beneath the trooper but he quickly caught up with her and finally got her out the door. She was charged with one count of resisting arrest without violence. Number 3. Michael and Alexandra Nelson What started out as a routine traffic stop in Long Island, New York one night in December 2018 quickly devolved into uncivilized chaos after state troopers began to suspect the driver of being intoxicated. According to an arrest report, 38-year-old Michael Nelson was visibly under the influence of alcohol. He was accused of repeatedly headbutting officers, while his wife, 29-year-old Alexandra, attempted to obstruct his arrest. The pair were taken down to the local barracks, where authorities claimed they continued to act combative. Police Lieutenant Victor Gizul told News 12 that Andrea spat at troopers and threw objects, including a pair of urine-soaked underwear, while Michael refused chemical tests. Michael was charged with driving while intoxicated, second-degree assault, criminal possession of a controlled substance, resisting arrest, and harassment. 
Andrea was hit with charges for second-degree attempted assault, criminal possession of a controlled substance, obstructing governmental administration, and disorderly conduct. The couple's lawyer, Mark Gann, told the press that the charges were quite overblown and that there was more to the story, but he declined to elaborate any further on the matter. Unfortunately, the outcome of the case is unclear. Number 2. Impatient Judge versus Defiant Defense Attorney a Brevard County, Florida courtroom erupted into chaos one day in 2014 when Judge John Murphy lost his patience with a defense lawyer's refusal to waive his client's right to a speedy trial. Footage of the heated interaction showed Murphy repeatedly ordering assistant public defender Andrew Weinstock to sit down. Weinstock refused to sit and said that he had a right to stand and defend his client, at which point Murphy challenged Weinstock to go out back and settle things the old-fashioned way. The men then disappeared off camera after walking into a hallway. People in the courtroom could hear banging and cursing before the judge returned to the courtroom out of breath. Weinstock's colleague, public defender Blaze Tretters, told Florida Today that Judge Murphy grabbed the lawyer by the collar and started punching him in the head as soon as he entered the hallway. Luckily, though, the two men were separated by a bailiff. And while Murphy received a round of applause upon his return to the courtroom, not everyone was impressed by his conduct. A few days after the incident, he took a temporary leave of absence to seek anger management treatment was ultimately removed from the bench. Number 1. Penelope Soto After being arrested in Miami for possession of Xanax in 2013, 18-year-old Penelope Soto giggled and behaved disrespectfully during a bail hearing in front of Judge Jorge Rodriguez Shoma. The judge initially set the young woman's bond at $5,000, but when she dismissively waved and said adios, Rodriguez Shoma apparently wasn't a fan of the girl's attitude, though, so he increased Soto's bail to $10,000. Soto responded by giving him the middle finger and telling him to F off, earning her 30 days in jail for contempt of court. Soto appeared in front of the judge just days later and apologized for her irrational behavior. Luckily, Rodriguez Shoma was forgiving. He vacated the teen's contempt sentence and lowered her bail back down to $5,000, and he even offered Soto an agreement that would see her charges dropped if she completed a rehab program. A year later, Soto made good on her end of the deal. After passing more than 100 drug tests as part of what she described as a life-changing program, the case against her was dismissed. Ten. Eric Stagno Planet Fitness prides itself on being a judgment-free zone, but one man apparently took the slogan a bit too literally in 2018, when he was seen exercising naked at one of the company's gyms in Playstow, New Hampshire. 30-year-old Eric Stagno stripped down to his birthday suit, left his clothing at the front desk, and walked around before doing yoga prompting gym employees to call the police. When he was approached by law enforcement, he reportedly cited the gym's judgment-free philosophy, but the explanation didn't fly with the officers, who took Stagno into custody on suspicion of indecent exposure, lewdness, and disorderly conduct. Throughout the court hearings, prosecutor Kevin Coyle accused the defendant of testing the limits of the judgment-free zone. Coyle also claimed that Stegno's behavior traumatized the front desk employee who was working on the day of the incident. Stegno was about to go to trial when he instead pleaded no contest to disorderly conduct. The judge overseeing the case found him guilty of indecent exposure and imposed a four-month suspended jail sentence on the man as a result. 9. Travis Williams in what may very well be the strangest arrest on today's list, a 23-year-old Miami man named Travis Williams appeared to be covered in white powder in his mugshot after being arrested in 2012. Police reportedly stopped at the scene after receiving a report about the suspect screaming obscenities outside the Bayside Marketplace. Williams was allegedly screaming at customers and making threats. In the section of his booking paperwork that asks the police to identify any scars, tattoos, and unique physical features, an officer wrote, none visible. It's unclear whether they wrote that because Williams was covered in what looked like a thick layer of baby powder, or if Williams actually lacked any distinctive features. 
The police report provided very few details, perhaps because the suspect was already well known to law enforcement. According to the smoking gun, Williams had a 94-page rap sheet by the time the bizarre powder incident occurred. According to records, the unemployed repeat offender had been arrested dozens of times for burglary, grand theft, marijuana possession, trespassing, larceny, battery, and other crimes. Naturally, the public was curious about why he was covered in powder, but authorities unfortunately declined to provide that answer in the arrest report. One internet rumor claimed that Williams had stolen five pounds of baby powder from a CVS store, but these reports also misidentify the suspect as a North Carolina resident and aren't mentioned in any credible media sources. And while Williams had been charged with cocaine possession numerous times, it seems unlikely that anyone would waste copious amounts of the expensive drug by rolling around in it. The reasons behind his strange appearance remain a mystery to this day. 8. Bryant Johnson One night in 2017, police in Casper, Wyoming received a call about a drunk man who was behaving strangely at a local residence. They arrived at the scene to find the subject of the complaint, Bryant Johnson, who claimed he was from the year 2048 and that he was an alien visiting to Earth to warn Casper's residents of an impending alien invasion. Johnson claimed that the extraterrestrials would arrive in the city the following year. He wanted to caution locals to leave as soon as possible and said that he wanted to speak with the president of the town. According to K2 Radio, Johnson told the responding officers that he was only able to time travel by having aliens fill his body with alcohol before he stood on a pad that transported him to 2017. He also explained that he ended up in the wrong year and that he was actually supposed to be in 2018. Besides observing the obvious aspects of Johnson's bizarre behavior, police noticed that his eyes were bloodshot, his speech was slurred, and he smelled like alcohol. He was subsequently taken to an emergency room where it was determined that he was unable to care for himself and that he was causing a disturbance in the ER. His blood alcohol level allegedly tested at 0.136, way over the legal limit of 0.08. And in the end, Johnson was charged with public intoxication. 7. John Bennett In 2016, Canadian authorities arrested an American man for allegedly paddling across the border illegally on an air mattress he bought at Walmart. 25-year-old John Bennett reportedly told police that he resorted to the unconventional crossing method after trying to enter the country legitimately and being turned away. A local resident called the police after seeing him using a piece of wood to paddle the makeshift raft across the St. Croix River that separates Maine from New Brunswick. Police found Bennett walking along a roadside in sopping wet clothes. Bennett claimed that he went to extremes to reach Canada because he felt a duty to protect his pregnant girlfriend who lived in the country. He said that the woman's ex-boyfriend was threatening her and that he was worried for her safety. As it turned out, officials denied Bennett entry at the Calais border crossing station because he was facing mischief charges in Canada at the time. After being turned away, most people would have given up but Bennett was determined to get where he was going. In the words of the judge who oversaw his criminal case for the illegal crossing, Bennett intended to get to Canada, come hell or high water. In the end though, he was sentenced to two months in jail. Six, Jesus impersonator. One day in 2018, sheriff's deputies responded to a call about a naked man who was seen lurking behind someone's home in McGuffin County, Kentucky. When they arrived, they found the suspect lying in some grass near the property. When asked for his name, he replied, maybe Jesus, and refused to provide any more information. According to law enforcement, he appeared to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, possibly even both. The homeowner who made the 911 call claimed that the man was pouring liquid out of a gasoline jug around their house. When they asked him to leave, he allegedly went into the homeowner's car and stole several things. During his ride in the back of a police cruiser, the man yanked out the cord of one of the vehicle's radars. 
Apparently, he finally started to cooperate after arriving at the local jail, where he admitted that his name was Austin Johnson. The police were about to fingerprint him, so it's safe to assume that he knew they would figure out who he was eventually and decided to come clean. Authorities charged Johnson with burglary, indecent exposure, criminal trespassing, criminal mischief, public intoxication, and providing false identifying information to police. Unfortunately, the outcome of the case is unclear. 5. Albert Maruna During a sting to catch predators who were targeting victims online in 2017, an undercover investigator began chatting with a man who was later identified as 22-year-old Albert Maruna from Youngstown, Ohio. Law enforcement would later accuse Maruna of believing that he was speaking with a minor and having bad intentions. According to an arrest report, the conversations began when Maruna responded to a dating ad posted by the fictitious victim. When he learned how young the individual was, he allegedly said he didn't believe in age. As you can likely imagine, the discussion soon became inappropriate with Maruna even bringing up marriage at one point. He also tried to arrange a meeting with the undercover officer and made some unusual requests for what he wanted the person to wear. Maruna was accused of trying to bribe the undercover investigator to meet face to face with promises of bringing Sprite soda and chicken Alfredo. Police nabbed him when he was on his way to the meeting and found a container of the pasta in his car. To make things even weirder, Maruna reportedly didn't seem to understand the problem with his actions during questioning. However, the reality of the situation must have eventually sunk in, and he ultimately pleaded guilty to one charge of possessing criminal tools, three charges of importuning, and four charges of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. As a result, the judge sentenced Maruna to 77 days in jail followed by 120 days of house arrest and three years of probation. 4. Elva Richards Ken and Annette Bienlin were fast asleep on the morning of their 55th wedding anniversary in 2018, when a van crashed into their Newburgh, Wisconsin home. The couple's neighbor was the first to call 911 after hearing a loud bang at around 3.15 in the morning. When the pair looked outside, they saw the vehicle embedded into the house about 15 feet, 4.6 meters off the ground. It had driven up a retaining wall and smashed into the side of the residence. Ken Bienlin told Fox 59 that he awoke to the sound of the collision and found himself just inches from the minivan's rear bumper, while the front bumper ended up in the attic. Annette was in the bathroom at the time of the crash, which most likely saved her life. She said that if she'd been in bed, she would likely no longer be around. The close call left the couple feeling grateful to not only be uninjured, but alive. They were overcome with relief when they looked at each other and realized that they were both okay. According to a police complaint, the van's driver, Alva Richards, was found unconscious in the driver's seat. At some point, he fell out of the vehicle and onto the ground. He appeared disoriented and under the influence of drugs or alcohol. The man allegedly told a responding deputy that he smokes weed daily, but couldn't remember when he last used marijuana. Richards also said that he suffered from a seizure disorder. When his van was searched, a small amount of marijuana and a grinder were found inside. In the words of Jamone and Gels, who worked for the company that towed the vehicle, Every time you think you may have seen it all, something like this happens and it resets. Richards was taken to the hospital for a blood draw and was charged with reckless endangerment and possession of THC. And consequently, he was sentenced to a year in jail for his behavior. 3. Justin Lou Harris When a wedding officiant asks if anyone objects to the marriage they're about to perform, most people don't expect anyone in the crowd to speak up. But that's exactly what happened to a Nevada man named Justin Lou Harris when he was at the altar in 2011. He'd invited his 55-year-old mother to attend the ceremony in Douglas County, but she disapproved of his bride. According to Harris, she walked into the church yelling and screaming. He said that he then carried his mother to the car because she had mobility issues. The pastor seemed to corroborate Harris's version of events telling responding officers that the woman was very upset 
and pleaded with her son not to marry his fiance. Harris's mother, on the other hand, told police a much different story. She claimed that as soon as she walked in the door, her son grabbed her by the neck of her shirt and dragged her out of the church, even though she had rheumatoid arthritis and walked with a cane. Authorities subsequently charged Harris with domestic battery, disorderly conduct and coercion, and instead of exchanging vows and taking wedding photos, he posed for a mugshot. 2. Heather Underwood 32-year-old OnlyFans model Heather Underwood was shocked when she learned that there was a warrant out for her arrest in 2022 over a garbage-related incident that happened eight years earlier. The British bombshell, who lived in the English village of Nutton, told her social media followers that she was gobsmacked when a police officer knocked on her door one morning to inform her of the warrant. Underwood said she had no idea what the cop was talking about and that she was so shocked she began to shake. She was taken into custody before she was told that the warrant stemmed from an incident in 2014, when she left some bags of garbage on the ground next to the bins, rather than inside of them. After sitting in a locked cell for several hours, Underwood was informed that the case had been discontinued, and she was released from custody. But it didn't make the ordeal any less traumatic or embarrassing for the young woman, who was especially horrified by the fact that she had no privacy while using the jail bathroom. Underwood further explained that she'd just moved into her previous residence when she found the garbage bins already full from her former tenants. Left with no other choice, she put her garbage next to the bins. She received a letter about it, but never heard anything else about the situation until her arrest eight years later. It all amounted to what she described as a huge waste of time and money, not to mention needless emotional trauma. 1. Melody Duchesne Since 2009, a video of a woman going on a rampage over her fast food order had gone viral on multiple occasions. The incident reportedly happened on New Year's Day at a McDonald's in Toledo, Ohio, where Melody Duchesne became outraged at an employee for refusing to serve chicken nuggets at 6.30 in the morning. Surveillance footage shows Duchesne punching the employee at the drive through window before trying to climb through it and into the restaurant. She then shouted, I am going to end you, and threw a bottle through the window. Throughout the ordeal, staff members could be heard talking about calling the police before Duchesne finally sped off. She claimed she was drunk at the time of the incident, but it didn't seem to serve as a mitigating factor for her actions. As a result, Duchesne was sentenced to 60 days in jail and was ordered to pay for the damage she caused to the drive through window. Eleven. Harry McDowell In 2021, police in North College Hill, Ohio, appealed to the public for help capturing a wanted fugitive named Harry McDowell. According to a Facebook post, the suspect was accused of breaking into his mother's house at least twice and assaulting and threatening her. He faced charges of aggravated burglary, menacing by stalking, domestic violence, and criminal damage. The day after the post appeared, a Facebook user going by the name Stephen Keonte Urkel posted a photo that appeared to show McDowell sitting in a red car and holding his own wanted photo. Police confirmed to local station WOWT that the man in the photo was McDowell and reported that he'd called them and told them he would not be turning himself in. It's unclear whether he was ever caught. 10. James Sutton It's hard to imagine someone with distinctive face tattoos living on the run as a fugitive for very long, but an Australian man named James Sutton managed to elude law enforcement long enough for them to post a picture online seeking the public's help with tracking the fugitive down. Naturally, social media users were entertained by what some described as the sharpie drawings on his face, which include heavily tattooed designs and the word BEAST in capital letters across his forehead. The Murray River Police near the Victoria and New South Wales border issued the alert after Sutton failed to appear in court while out on bail for assault and property damage charges. After the appeal was posted, he changed his profile picture to a photo of himself with his face partially covered in an apparent attempt to taunt the police. Sutton was captured after two weeks on the run 
and was taken into custody pending the outcome of his ongoing case. 9. Anthony Akers When a wanted man named Anthony Akers went viral in 2018, he was struggling with active addiction and had spent the last 12 years in and out of jail. Police in Richland, Washington, appealed to the public for help tracking him down on a failure to appear warrant, but they didn't have to look far to find him. Akers commented on the post, stating, Calm down, I'm gonna turn myself in. He followed up with another comment, apologizing for his commitment issues and promising to show up by lunchtime the next day. If he couldn't get there on his own, he said he'd call for a ride. He kept his word, and while thousands of amused social media users eagerly awaited an update on the situation, the Navy veteran was at a serious low point and had come to realize that he needed help. Acres later told local station KEPR that the warrant was issued after he missed a visit with his probation officer. His downward spiral continued after that, to the point where he was facing six to eight years in prison. By then, he said he'd accepted the prison was going to just be a normal part of his life. But the court gave him an alternative, to participate in a new veterans court program, which focused less on punishment and emphasized the importance of getting meaningful treatment for former service members. Akers took up on the offer and worked hard to get his life back on track. He got sober, got a job, and regained the independence he'd lost through drug use. A year and a half later, he graduated from Veterans Court. And while he remains on social media, he said he now uses it to inspire others who are battling addiction and going through the same struggles that he once saw no way out of. 8. Christopher Spaulding When Georgia's Rockdale County Sheriff's Office posted its latest 10 most wanted list on Facebook in 2022, a man named Christopher Spaulding left a comment saying, How about me? The agency responded, stating, You're correct, you have two warrants, we're on the way. Later that day, the sheriff's office shared a photo of 40-year-old Spaulding being taken into custody for two counts of felony violation of probation. The post included a caption thanking Spaulding for his assistance with his own capture. Following the arrest, the department reminded the public that its most wanted list is based on the severity of charges its fugitives face and that being absent from it isn't a get-out-of-jail-free card. The memo also made it clear that even if someone's not on the list, the fugitive unit is still looking for them. 7. Kelsey Wood A chaotic police chase in Los Angeles came to a highly unusual end in 2015 when a woman got out of her car and began dancing. The pursuit began at around 10 o'clock p.m. in the city's downtown area, when officers suspected 25-year-old Kelsey Wood of driving under the influence and attempted to pull her over. She fled and continued to drive on the rims of her wheels after she ran over spike strips and blew her tires. When the car finally came to a stop, the young motorist got out and busted a move. Wood allegedly got back into the car, but the police took her into custody before she could try to drive away. In another incident involving impromptu dancing in LA, dozens of bystanders gathered in the street while police were trying to apprehend an allegedly armed driver they'd just disabled with spike strips. Officers ordered the crowd to get out of the way, but they ignored the command. As the frustration grew among law enforcement, two women began to twerk while the suspect leaned out of the window and watched with a seemingly satisfied look on his face. He eventually started his vehicle back up and attempted to drive off, but the police managed to block him into an alley and took him into custody. 6. Chloe Jones 23-year-old Chloe Jones seemed more amused than scared when the Greene County, Pennsylvania Sheriff's Office named her as a wanted person in a Facebook post in 2019. She responded to the post with snarky comments, asking the agency if they do pickup or delivery. Jones was wanted for failing to appear in court on a misdemeanor assault case, but it was most likely her behavior on Facebook rather than the crime she was accused of that prompted other social media users to encourage her to turn herself in. People seemed rather put off by her attitude, which they described using words like immature, embarrassing, and trashy. The bank-sassing young fugitive revealed in the heated back and forth that her original charge stemmed from a fight she got into during a previous jail stint. 
She claimed that she hadn't shown up for court because her boyfriend was in the hospital. In her defense, she rightfully pointed out that none of the people bashing her had ever met her personally and didn't know her. The war of words backfired on Jones when tips came pouring into law enforcement. Police tracked her down in neighboring West Virginia and had her extradited to Pennsylvania. Since then, it appears as though she's sorted out her legal issues and moved on with her life. 5. Ulid Sakaki In December 2019, five men escaped from Belgium's turnout prison by scaling an exterior wall and speeding off in a waiting getaway car. Three of the prisoners were recaptured the next day, while another remained on the run for just a few weeks. The fifth escapee, Ulid Sakaki, managed to evade law enforcement for months. Sakaki's family was no stranger to law enforcement. His brother, Ashraf, was a notorious prison escape artist who carried out three high-profile escapes long before Ulid followed in his footsteps. Ulid Sakaki was sentenced to two years in prison in 2018 for drug trafficking and injuring someone in a shooting. By the time he escaped, he'd served a large portion of his sentence, so it seems nonsensical that he chose to escape. But he was wanted in his home country of Morocco for drug trafficking, and he knew that he would be sent there to face justice after finishing his sentence in Belgium. During his time on the lam, Ulid sent a letter to the directors of the prison he escaped from. The envelope contained his inmate ID badge and a postcard that said greetings from Thailand on it. Authorities suspected that it was an attempt to deceive them into thinking Sakaki had fled the country. Fugitive hunters finally caught up with him nine months later. He served the rest of his time and was extradited to Morocco. 4. Dean Manning Instead of turning himself into police after skipping out on probation in Norwich, England in early 2023, a four foot nine TikToker and Facebook user named Dean Manning bragged to his followers about his ability to evade law enforcement. In one video, he could be seen walking past a police station while saying, I shouldn't really be here, should I? Another post which appeared in a private group said, let's see how long it takes for me to get caught. The 34-year-old also posted a video angrily clarifying that he's 5 foot 3 in high heels and claiming that he would have surrendered if the police hadn't published the wrong height. But Manning's openness about his evasion of the law didn't work out in his favor. Members of the media and the public came forward with information that helped law enforcement track him down. Shortly before he was captured, he panhandled from his followers in a video asking for money to finance his life on the run. In 2022, prior to his more recent brush with the law, Manning was convicted of attacking his ex while high on drugs and alcohol and was ordered to serve part of his 18-month sentence in prison and the remainder in probation. When he failed to check in with his officer, he knew that it meant he would go back to prison, which is where he ended up despite his best efforts to achieve a different outcome. 3. Joshua Bennett's When police in Gloucester, England, posted a photo of a suspected drug dealer named Joshua Bennett on Facebook, along with an appeal to the public for information, the wanted fugitive wrote a smart aleck comment about he's one inch taller than specified and how law enforcement could have used a more flattering picture. He also posted photos of himself living life, seemingly without a care in the world. But his carefree enjoyment of freedom was short-lived. A few weeks after the wanted post appeared, Officers spotted Bennett in public and took him into custody for jumping bail on previous charges of supplying marijuana and cocaine. He initially maintained his innocence, but ultimately pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to two years in prison. In court, Bennett's lawyer cited his client's gambling addiction and other personal issues as mitigating factors for his behavior. But the prosecution saw this as no excuse for the negative impacts his drug dealing had on the community and was happy to see him put behind bars. 2. Armed and Argumentative A group of four men who were seen walking around Wyandotte, Michigan, armed with guns and carrying cameras weren't necessarily breaking any laws, but people found the display off-putting and called the police. The incident happened in 2022, during an era of unprecedented mass shootings in the United States. So when workers saw the men standing outside a medical facility, they didn't want to take any chances on their safety. 
Officers respectfully approached the group to discuss the report that had been made, but they were allegedly rude and uncooperative from the beginning of the conversation. Deputy Police Chief Archie Hamilton told the News Herald that the men demanded to know the officers' names, despite their names being displayed on their uniforms, and proceeded to provocatively squeak plastic pigs at the cops. According to Hamilton, it's not uncommon to see people acting like this. He described these types of groups as hiding under the guise of protecting the rights of American citizens, with ulterior motives to cause trouble, create confrontation with police, gain attention, and ultimately file a lawsuit in hopes to collect money. And while he acknowledged that the demonstrators weren't committing any crimes, Hamilton said that he didn't feel that the callers who contacted the police were overreacting, given the rampant gun violence in the United States. He also pointed out that because a lot of mass shooters record their crimes, it's especially understandable that people were alarmed by the men. If anything, Hamilton seemed annoyed that police have to deal with these types of confrontation seekers, which he said can slow down law enforcement's response to similar calls, including when an active shooter is involved. 1. Ezra Miller After an initially successful start to a promising acting career, Ezra Miller descended into what appears to be an ongoing fall from grace that started around 2020. The talented performer, who identifies as non-binary and uses the pronouns they and them, became entangled in one of the most concerning controversies in 2022, when the parents of a young woman named Dakota Ionize petitioned for a restraining order against them. According to documents from the Standing Rock Swee Tribal Court in North and South Dakota, Takata's parents accused Miller of using violence, intimidation, threat of violence, fear, paranoia, delusions, and drugs to influence their daughter. Takata defended Miller despite these allegations and criticized her parents' attempts to separate the pair, who were living and traveling together at the time. Authorities were unable to serve the protective order because they didn't know where Miller was, and the disgraceful Hollywood figure seemed perfectly fine with that. In a series of Instagram posts, they taunted law enforcement with messages like, You cannot touch me, I'm in another universe, and message from another dimension. One rambling message, which appeared to be yet another declaration of Miller not feeling accountable to police, began with the sentence, I am shielded from negative people and their ill intent. Shortly after the posts appeared, Miller deleted their Instagram account, but screenshots continued to circulate, and it wasn't long before they landed at the center of yet another bizarre scandal. A few months later, they told the media through a representative that they're focusing on complex mental health issues and apologized for their past behavior. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a doppelganger who happens to be a wanted fugitive in your area and is clearly relishing in their ability to elude law enforcement? Or have your car in a wanted fugitive notice after lending it to a friend who didn't mention anything being wrong when they returned it to you? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.